time is 6.30. I hereby call to order this irregularly scheduled meeting of the Sunderland Select Board. Our first order of business tonight will be to approve the minutes of our last meeting, April 8th. Make a motion to approve the minutes of April 8th. Second. Second. All right, we have a motion made and seconded to approve the minutes of April 8th. All those in favor? Aye. Aye, Aye. Crystal Drake, John Boy. We have Thank you. All right, first order of new business is a building permit fee request. Want to go some background? Yeah, so um, we have uh, Dr. Arcolio, who um, owns Falls Farm on the border of Sunderland and Montague. Um, and he's been trying to put up a barn on his property. Um, started out with a contractor, uh, and we discussed this a little bit two weeks ago. Um, started out with a, one contractor, moved to a separate contractor, and um, typically when there's a new permit pulled for a building permit, you pay the fee all over again. This was a pretty hefty fee. Um, so there was a request to um, reduce the, the second fee. <laughs> and then we have the building commissioner and the property owner. If you have questions about the process or anything else. All right. Um, where do you want to start? <laughs> I, I don't know. Do you? Um, I don't know, Tom. Do you want to? Yeah, I don't have the you know, website. Okay. Um, thank you. That just showing at the beginning the um, front page there. We've already started without a permit, the double, and they're not refundable. Um, you want me to give a little speech on the past on that, how yeah. we set the precedent? So I believe the, the board voted on that. It was approved um, June of 19. So that's been not a very, you know, not changed or uh, raised or anything since then. Um, I want to say the last big one in town was a, because um, not only do they want to waive the fee for this, but work's been continuing. Um, I got an email from the prior, oh, sorry. First contractor permit was issued 915 to 23. The email from Zach, the prior contract, first contractor, was 1222 of 23. That um, formal notice, you know, informing they were no longer engaged in the project. The same day the doctor had actually sent as the property owner on 6 on 1222 23 that we'll be having a new um, homeowner, a new uh, contractor poll for himself, the homeowner, ASAP. Um, I did not receive the application from the new contractor, Eric Buckland, until 2.26 of 24. And, you know, still misinformation, still never received anything of fee, which the town had always didn't want us to even start the process. But I, as soon as I get it, we start working on the process of the um, reviewing that. Um, and then about three or four weeks ago, the conservation had sent me a picture of the steel had continued, which you can see this isn't, unfortunately, it's a big structure. Um, I want to say the last big one I caught without a permit in Sunderland was a commercial rule. I'm not going to say an address or anything, but the fee was, I think, 5000 because the double went from 2500 to around 5000 Um But my thoughts were that, you know, not only did I not receive the fee originally, but this definitely should be a double um, due to the reason that this work has continued. And the home, the owner, uh, doctor is not, uh, you know, the contractor's notice, you know, continues obviously since um, even if he wasn't put back on until February, you're licensed, you're liable for all this. This work should not have, you know, continued in, without even a permit. And to clarify, the work is being done under the new contractor? Correct. Okay. Thank you. So it took over two months to actually get an application from the new contractor, but since it's been applied for, it, they've been, you know, it's under, I'm assuming, under his um, authority and it's continued. The foundation was poured under the previous permit, right? Or I'm sorry. The foundation was poured under the previous permit? Yep. Yes. So what you're saying, what you're asking for is for the 
This hidden fee is the first one, but double this time because of the work. As a formality, like if everybody's been treated, mm -hmm. you know, you pay the first fee, and because it's continuous work, it'd be a double. And unfortunately, it's over a million dollar agricultural building. Yeah. So it's almost $20,000 being doubled up. Gotcha. So, it's, so was the initial fee amount incorrect, and the bill was much bigger than was initially applied for? Um, for some reason, the first um, under Zach. The firm fee was ten thousand something. Okay, but that was was that for the same size building or was that for a smaller building? Yes, it was the same. Same size. Okay, yep. so then so then he stopped. What what percent of the work did you do on that permit? Um, like if, if it's a ten thousand dollar fee, there's probably you know a certain amount of time it's going to take to do the whole thing. What portion do you think you were through on that? Percentage wise, I'm sure I, I, I was under the assumption that's why the fee went down because it's based on the cost of the project. Yeah. And it went down to 900 or something, not over a million dollars. Okay. So I was just assuming they took the foundation off, which is fair. Yeah. You know, okay. Because okay. that's what it came to, correct? Okay. Okay. So, Tom, how much work is it on your side for this fee to get changed from one contractor to another? Basically, it's a whole new review. You know, I, I you know, still chasing. I've emailed six times for a workman's comp certificate. Um, you know, as soon as it comes in, the process starts. So you're starting the whole thing, and all sign-offs are supposed to be, you know, getting gotten again. And prior to our meeting the other day, we still, you know, conservation was notified by the owner um, to get that sign-off. Yeah. So conservation was notified signed off on the first permit they have to sign off again on the, when it changes contractors yes even though the footprint of the building doesn't change or anything you can't use that same sign off usually it's a you know as long as they call it the like site conservation values for instance you know they're going to say i've already been out there i've got the plot plan we're good to go it's just another okay we usually do it by text or email mm -hmm. she's right right away we'll send it all right, so there's no actual work involved for conservation to do this the second time. It's just them sending you a text saying it hasn't changed. We're good. Um, I can't speak for them, but I mean, being this close within a few months, I would hope not. Unfortunately, it's a big fee because it's a big, you know, huge building and a, and a huge the cost of it. Nobody, never been questioned before. <clears throat> right. Well, unfortunately, I think we're when we're looking at a fee this size, and again, um, do we know what the reason was for changing contractors? I don't know which side. I didn't really figure that matter. They just I, I received the email from both. You know, going out of their their partnership together, so I didn't question that part. I do not know. Too bit too busy, and he couldn't uh, just didn't have the bandwidth. I mean, I guess my my question would be: <clears throat> Was a contract signed? Did that contract have language in it to talk about what would happen if he was too busy for the project? Are you going to go after the contractor to recover some of the costs involved in this? I mean, no. these are all questions that, you know. Sure. Mike Dietrich, I'm a professional engineer with the Engineering and Land Solutions um, here at, on behalf of Falls Farm. There's a couple of questions I want to ask prior to getting into the conversation of, you know, the doubling the fees or where that will fall. Looking at the fee schedule for the town of Sunderland, there is an agricultural building on land built or devoted to agricultural use. Where first thing I want to ask is why that fee wasn't used. This is a registered farm. It would drop the permit fee down to forty one hundred dollars and change forty one seventy to be exact. If you include the mezzanines, if you don't include the mezzanines, it'd be twenty five hundred dollars. Prior, they have gone to the um, planning board asking for they were going to have a fence there. So I mean, right now it's considered an agricultural building. But prior, they put it in as they put it in as a commercial building. Never questioned it. But I know prior they've gone to the planning board because they wanted to have events there, whether 
the town will allow that. Yeah, that, that's that's not true. This was always going to be for farm use. We were not going to have any events there. I sat down in the meeting where we no, talked about that, that possibility. Was, that was a separate building, like a post and D building. That that is not this place where we're going to grow stuff. So that was another. Okay. That was that was another project that I was thinking about doing when I talked to you folks. On the same agricultural property, correct? Yes. Yes. But but a different, totally different building. Um, that was just a concept to see what it would take on the town side to see if it was even feasible. That is not this building. They're different buildings. In farming, I mean, there's many avenues that an agricultural use building can hold events. There's firewalk permits that they can apply for. They can ask for a one day extension and occupancy loads. There's many ways to approach it that doesn't force it into a commercial use. The no, just revisiting the street, we would ask that to be considered just moving forward on this permit. Um, oftentimes, permits that we've been involved in, I know there has been some time lag between the contractors' activities, uh, but normally you can transfer the lead in the work, or some municipalities allow that. So, essentially, the building permit would go from entity A to entity B because the review work has been done. And I'm not criticizing Tom's work at all, but this building has been reviewed. So to come back and say, I know it says down channel 15, channel 15, the work should be doubled, or the excuse me, the permit fee to be doubled if it's unauthorized work. Um, I just seen a permit that was issued and was never rescinded, as far as I know. I'm getting involved in this now. So there's from what I've been told, there's no cease and desist on the project. There's no official order that was served to them, as well as the building permit originally is still out there, let's say. It's never been rescinded. So I guess an email went out, and I apologize, I don't have all the dates, but an email went out on Palm Sunday asking for work to stop. And I've been informed that work from that day forward never proceeded again like as we're sitting here uh the foundation work was overseen by the engineer that designed it um there's testing from allied testing everything to follow a protocol that you would for commercial space so let's say for argument's sake that some work some steel was erected in between the time frame tom notified them and they didn't stop or however that proceeded on a penalty level, let's say that accounts for 5% of the building. I think it's unjust to ask for any sort of doubling the fee on a, a permit like this. Other municipalities that we've had work continue, it's always been, in a sense, negotiated or just get back into compliance, which we're here to ask to do. Nothing malicious was taking place at that. And just so, 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 so the, the first contractor, the plans were approved, everybody signed off, they were given the go ahead to go, and they switched contractors. And before they finished the paperwork for that change, they did some work. Is that really what we're talking about? Correct. I mean, it, just to be careful, though, as far as the review, the first contractor had provided his workman's comp policy, yeah. had the comp. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The new one doesn't have insurance, we're yeah. still waiting for that. Sure. Um, and I'm not here. It's, it's up to you. I, I sure. haven't told my, how I've been. I so, understand. I understand. I'm, like I said, unfortunately, it's the amount and all. But you know, everybody's nobody's ever had to come to the board before to ask for the, you know, to be lowered. That's up to you to do. That wouldn't be me. I have to be fair and treat everybody the same. Mm -hmm. Yes. Right. So, Tom, at this point, what you're missing is the um. The insurance paperwork, basically, if we put it under an umbrella, is that what you're missing? Well, since our meeting, that all has stopped now. It's all good. They're working on the things. We're, there's a few other things, but we're, we're, they're working on it. We're getting all that. Okay. We've actually had a meeting um, with the new contractor and all. 
last week. Okay. So, yes, go ahead. Hi, good evening. My name is Diane McClellan, and I'm the account manager for the farm. Um, thank you for allowing us to be here for this meeting. We do have a an insurance certificate and a letter from our insurance agent. Um, actually, they issued even a certificate for a comp to the town of Sunderland, which I have in possession here. And our insurance is also agent issued saying that the policy provides the required workers' compensation coverage for all employees of Falls Farm and any people that are legally considered employees by Massachusetts law. So when you have a final audit for your workers' compensation, they'll come in, they'll look at all your records, they look at your payroll, and one of the items they'll ask are any 1099 contractors. You're required to pull those and show those to the auditor. Now, obviously, you want to make sure that those people have their own coverage because you don't want to be on, on, you know, responsible for paying anything if, if they something unfortunately happens to them. But God forbid if something did happen to them and they were uninsured or underinsured, our policy would be required to pay for those people under Massachusetts law. So I can just explain that. So I've never gotten it where the contractor didn't have it and it was a a um, agricultural farm policy. So back when I was in business and I did roofing, the percentage of roofing was based on what I paid a year. Steel was probably a little more, I think logging a little bit more than that. So I reached out to the state, I've been in the office before to try to avoid these issues, Alan Green in, in Boston, and it didn't make sense to him. So he advised myself and Jeff to talk to council and council agreed if they, Boston didn't think that was the way. That's why they wanted me to reach out to council. That um, if I didn't want to get into any of this, it's just the fee. But mm -hmm. the, um, it was okay. The uh, council has told Jeff and I if they get a letter from the agent saying they will cover the farm workers to set the steel and that they're going to cover and take care of um, you know the contractor. It doesn't have work. It's comp that council said we're okay. We're just waiting for that, but they haven't had a long time to get that yet. So okay. yeah, I do. And that's all part of the review. The prior person had it all right there. Yeah. So it, you know it didn't look right, so I questioned it. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> if you if you were to give us a percentage or ratio between how much work it took to do the permit the first time and how much work, and I want to include this meeting. And they're going back and forth back to December as part of that process because that is part of the process. Would you say it's just half as much work as the last one? That's fair. Half the 60% okay. about like that is fine. So obviously the other members of the board have their own opinions. Um I would be comfortable making it a wash where we don't reduce the fee, but we don't charge the doubling. Because we're doing about half as much work, so we can say, "Hey, we need to put it as we reduce the fee by half and then double it, or we need the fee alone and don't double it." But either way, I would feel comfortable as that being a adjustment down for the lack of extra work that we need to do, but then adjustment up to take into consideration the work that was being done without the permit. You have an opinion on that, Dan? Yeah, that sounds that sounds good to me. Crystal, does that sound fair to you, or do you have a different take on that? So I guess I just want to understand what you're saying for sure. So you're saying that adjust the fee down to the agricultural and allow the fine for the work being done, which causes it to double? What I'm saying is the fees, whatever we'll call $20,000, let's say, just pick a number, whatever it is, we can either look at it as we half that fee and then double it, or we look at it as we just leave it alone. But either way, I'm saying we charge them the full fee, but we don't increase that because of the the, the unpermitted work. So we, you can look at it as we are having the fee and then doubling it, or we can look at it as we're just you know, balancing them out and however you want. But um, I don't necessarily feel comfortable going all the way to twice the full fee just because a little bit of impermanent work was done. I think that's a little bit of an overreaction, nor do I necessarily feel comfortable completely ignoring the unpermitted work because that's a, a precedent that we set in town and that's an important thing. And there's a reason why we have language in here about doubling it is because it's to prevent people from doing unpermitted work. So 
that's why I'm saying I feel like we can go down and up and then just end back where we were to begin with, and I feel comfortable with that. Um, but that's why I'm asking you guys what you feel about. So at the end of the day, your proposal is um, no additional fee or that what's been paid to date for the permit is going to be considered enough. No, I mean, what they paid for the old permit is what it is. It's like a for the new permit that the town says you have to pay the full price of the permit. Plus, because of the un, un, unpermitted work, we're saying we would normally double that. But instead of doubling it, we're saying no, we're going to just come in with just the, the flat fee a second time. I have a question. How, how do you account for the over? For the overcharge, initial overcharge, probably two and a half times as much as the building should have been charged for a building permit. That was the I, I, think he, I think it was charged incorrectly up front. So my, my short answer would be that would be something to have taken up back when you applied for that fee with the old inspector. Um, this, if that was not you, that was... No, that was, that was me. No, you also... Um, I mean, but our that, our town's understanding, based on conversations, and I understand you're saying this is not the case, but our the town's understanding was that you were planning on having entertainment on premises, and based on that, that's is that correct? That's what the, the fee was. No, um, I, I understand what that's so yeah, yeah, so yeah. The farm was but it's commercial. Yeah. So there's um, two other farms: one on, on Russell, the um, chicken, and then um, whatever the other street is. There's two, and you know, it's not the farm stand, it's not the little farm. They always put their, I don't question it, because they always put them as a commercial permit. It's a million dollar building. Yeah. You know, they put it as a commercial, being a commercial building. Um, they don't go after the agriculture exemption, but that'd be your your thought. You know, that was more for a small, small town farm with a you know family run. So just based on the other two people that have put the, um, I've never questioned it, the first one, is put it as commercial, so I believe what you're asking is if they would pick if you're going to go down to the agricultural or go by the commercial, which is the applicant has in that. Um, and that would be your decision. But to be fair, the other two farms, and they've done three or four, I'm trying to think of the name of the one that's being sold now to some of the help. They've done three or four, you know, nowhere near the size of this building that always put it as a commercial commercial application. Riverland? I'm sorry? Riverland Farms? Yeah. Oh, Kitchen Garden. Kitchen Garden. Yeah. Yes. So to revisit that discussion there, there was no definition within your user fee on the size of the agricultural use. So we would ask for that to be you know, considered because most likely from the outside looking in, it appears that it was overcharged, whoever error it was. Uh, but nonetheless, the money is in the department for this project. So I kind of agree and would urge the board as I don't know the last thing when Ms. Phyllis, but to, to go along that line, if there was gonna be any fee or penalty imposed to find it already paid and there essentially would almost be a credit still. You know, a lot of things, because it's difficult and I see for, um, as well, a lot of communities have this throw in that okay, if you begin work without the fees, get stuck. I'm sure if we look up case law on something large like this or larger, there's either a negotiated settlement on percentage or because there, let's say it was a twenty thousand dollar permit. The the amount of work that we're talking for this confusion, and Tom's doing his job. He enforced that he feels work was taking place without the permit. But from a realistic and um, kind of business compassionate, farm compassionate stance, if it's four columns and uh, you know the Perlin line to it, what does that equate to? Five, ten percent of the work. And when we talk about the permit, as you mentioned. There's an administrative side to the permit, which yes, is being duplicated on some level. All the inspections and all the closeout side of the permit is still alive. That fee's never been exhausted yet. So there is state standing 
It's, um, and I'm not pretending to be an attorney, I'm just gonna read it up because we have it. It's Emerson College versus Boston, and it established three criteria for what a municipality can charge for fees, right? So the, it says a fee must be charged for a particular service that benefits the client, which this is, right? It's an exchange permit for building. The fee must be paid by choice. It's the owner's choice to pay the fee, that's agreeable. On three though, and this is the state standards, what came out of that rule. A fee must be collected not to raise revenues per se, but to compensate the government entity for its expenses in providing that service. This has been interpreted to me that a fee cannot exceed the cost to provide the service. So to say is violation assess the town another $10,000 in cost is wrong. I'm sorry, that's not a fee. That's a fine. Oh, exactly. It's a different thing. Yeah. But then if we get into the fining parameters, they were never served order. They were never given notice. They came to the town and said we're switching contractors. They knew. No, well, I believe they were switching contractors before the buyer, any notion of in this work. Well, I'm saying the new contractor should have known that when the train, when the, when he took ownership of the project, mm -hmm. that the old permit did not apply to him. That, that's the contractor's fault, and you can do whatever you want. Well, to I can't speak that. from the but, okay, but that, that's fine. It is but, common that it does transfer to the new entity, it does, yes, not retroactively when work is being done without there being fees, though. That's mm -hmm. the without there being penalties, though. Right. Um, and the point of penalties is not to recover costs to the town, the point of penalties is to make there be a sting to doing work illegally. Sure, that's the point of them, and they do not fall into any kind of category about whether or not they're recoverable expenses or anything like that. Yeah. Um, but this would apply directly to the fee itself also. Yes, but the, also the, the cost of the fee is not just the 17 things he did to do it. It's also the percentage of the overall operating budget for his department. It's the percentage of the operating budget of the town for us sitting here doing this. It's part of the whole thing. So yes, you can say like, I only can count this much money versus stuff being done physically for my property, but that's not the whole picture. Sometimes it's going to be a little bit more than the actual cost. Sometimes it's going to be a little bit less than the actual cost. What you're talking about is the state saying that as a whole, the town can't make money off of the process. And as long as at the end of the day, our fees are set such that we're coming out roughly even, that's what that law is. It, mm -hmm. From my perspective, that's what that ruling is saying. Not that at any given individual permit has to be accountable for every dollar spent. That's not... No, we weren't applying that directly either. It was just, let's say the way this plays out, if we were to find out with the agricultural use, the permit's 4,200 and change, right? 4,270 to be exact. Triple that is $12,000. And again, not diminishing Tom's work or any work, but the amount of inspections that that truly entails and work, I feel hard pressed to think it cost the town $12,000 to do that, let alone $30,000. Do you, and I'm not trying to be offensive, I'm just trying to make it real. So let's say there's- So I five, think there are two different things. There's our fees, which if you're gonna challenge our fees, you can challenge our fees. We're talking about this fee in this instance. Sure. So let's stick to that and yep. then we can, if you feel like our fees are unfair, we can have a discussion about that another time. If you feel they're illegal, well, you have an option to do that. We think that they are fine. Yep. Yeah. And, and I, I, I can only speak for myself, but I do not feel inclined to adjust the fees solely because you don't think they're fair. Yeah. If we have a discussion about adjusting the fees because this is a special circumstance where you've already paid for one fee and whatnot, that's a discussion, mm -hmm. but you're not going to get a lot of traction trying to tell us that the, the fees in general aren't fair because that's not a th this is a equally enforced fee schedule across the board you know in, in that, two different in, separate things in that event that's kind of why we're lining up that we would want to stick with the agricultural provision that's allowed in your fee schedule which would put our permit at four thousand and change forty two seventy that to me is that to me is a fair way to do it because I think it was overcharged. Whether it was a misunderstanding or not, that's water under the bridge. But in reality, you know, that building is never going to be used to have parties in it. And when we met, 
it was for another building at a different location on the property. I also just not entirely sure it's the town's responsibility to tell you how to submit your permit. And if if the permit was submitted as a as a commercial property and wasn't submitted as a agricultural property, which correct me if I'm wrong, that's what I'm hearing from you. That's not the town's responsibility to look at that and say, you're right, that's not fair. And you can bring it to us and we're having a conversation about it. But the fact of the matter is that that wasn't our responsibility to catch, fix, tell you otherwise. Um, as far as I'm concerned, the first fee is and has been passed and gone, and we're not going back in time and adjusting the fee that you already paid for something that's work, that workers started on and whatnot. What we're talking about today is the second fee for the continuation right. of the work on the new person. Um, so back to what I suggested, if you want to look at it as we go down to the agricultural fee and charge the double because the work started, okay. Or you can look at it as we're charging the, the fee and not doubling it. Um, either way, it's going to come out to be a very similar number. Um, now, obviously, we can discuss what that exact number looks like, but yeah, so, that's why I was this way. I guess the question, my question is, you really feel like we don't have an obligation to assist somebody in assuring that they have applied for the correct permit. So if I have commercial property and I apply for a residential permit, shouldn't someone assist me and say, no, you should be applying for a commercial permit? I mean, I, yes, if it doesn't make sense. But from my understanding, it made sense because of past similar projects that were put in as commercial. I mean, this is a commercial bill. Like I said, it's not a family farm. It's happened. There's been the precedent has been set for three or four. I mean, they'd probably come back. Um, like I said, Russell Street, I think there was two projects on that farm, and then the other one was two or three. Um, and I was put in, I want to say the solar, they even put in a solar because it's a it has employees, there's operation there. It's not the agricultural exemption to um was for the little family farm. So we, owner we, owner occupied. So I don't know, I don't know if the board wants to take some time to think about this and we can you know revisit it at the next meeting. Um how do you guys feel about that? Uh, yeah, I mean, we could. I, mean, I was just going to ask. So, so we charge the initial one commercial. So, it's it's coming back. So we could either look to double it, right? And we could say that the next. So, so, let me just make sure I'm clear. So, the, if, if they apply for a second application, new permit, does that mean the fee for the second one is going to be double what the first one was, or is it? No, the doubling is just saying that whatever the new permit fee is, yeah, gets doubled because work for that permit started before the permit was. So if we end up deciding it's a four thousand dollars permit because we go agriculture, whatever it is, we could double that to eight. If we decide it's a commercial building and we want to go with the full thing, we could start with the whatever twenty thousand dollars and double that. But that's sort of the the upper and lower ends of the. With the pressure, you know, the the towns on all the other buildings we've done, it's always been commercial. Yes, sir. Yeah. So so, I guess the, 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 what I'm thinking is we, that's that's probably good to keep it that way, and but then we have to think about reducing based on the the level of effort. And that's why I was saying that, like, whether you want to consider it that we have the original the, the original fee, but then we double it because of the unpermitted work, mm -hmm. or we waive the, uh, the the fee, or we waive the penalty and just charge them the full fee. Either way, it ends up being the same amount, which is why I was. Yeah. All right, I guess I'll have one more question. So, so at the end of the day, how much extra effort do you think it would be to do both of these? You know, is it an extra twenty five percent? Is it an extra? For, for what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you, I have to ask. You're about, half again. about half again as much. So if you, if you put them both together, you yeah, think it's about a 50% premium. That's okay. Fair, yes. Okay. Thanks. Which is why yeah, I'm saying like I'd be okay with having the fee, yeah. but yeah. there has to be some consideration for the work being done. Okay. Uh, if the board needs to take more time to think about it, obviously take your time. But I do know that um, the building is. I corrected. They'd like to finish it, so I think it should be sooner that we can get to a resolution. I think so. that is fair. Probably. Um. Sorry, yes. Go ahead. So, if we're going to proceed, you know, a penalty phase to this permit side, what happens in a lot of communities? I'm not sure 
here in Sunderland, do we all agree there's a percentage of that permit fee that Tom mentioned that takes 30%, 50%, whichever, that exists from the first filing? Right or wrong, if it's commercial or right, there's five, six thousand dollars sitting there that was never feed. Could that be um, used it's for us? All new. Yeah, because the, he never fulfilled. So, Mayor, so are you just saying from a strictly legal standpoint, those are the two things that are highlighted in the bond. One, it's a non refundable fee, which means that every penny of the fee that you apply for the first time mm -hmm. is non refundable. We can choose to make it refundable. We can choose to, to do that. But the fact of the matter is, knowing that going into that permitting process, you guys said, yeah, sure, we understand it's non refundable fee. And the second part of that is that there's a doubling if, if a permit work. Those are very clear, explicit things that all parties knew about going into the permitting process. Mm -hmm. So, and I guess yeah. we're not asking you folks to, we're just asking for some sort of compassion, right? Because Falls Farm doesn't build buildings for a living, right? Mm -hmm. he, he's a doctor and he has a farm that he wants to run. The, Our goal is to be a viable business in the town of Sunderland, to be cooperative, to be a good corporate citizen. Dr. Polio is a well-regarded physician in this community and he, along with all the employees at that farm, want this to be a successful, viable business venture. Um, Dr. Arpoio is trying to design that property. There's a massive food insecurity problem in Western Massachusetts. We produce that commodity. We can help with that. That's what we're here for. Um, he's trying to do lots of things to make it not dependent, like to reduce the energy consumption so that it's more natural, so that we don't have to pass that high cost on to people so they can afford food to eat. That's why we're here. When we were the new kids on the block, um, and we went to our fellow farmers for advice. They helped us. And you know what? When they needed our help, Dr. Arpolio would help them in anything they needed. And that's the way you work in a community. For together, it takes a village. So we're not here to circumvent anything that's asked of us. We don't operate our businesses that way. We want to be compliant. We have insurance. Um, all the people were here. That's part of my job to secure that. When we met last week with uh, Mr. Quinlan, the next day I was in that office, I was like, every request, and I have most of it all here because we need to be compliant. Uh, we need to get him what we want, what he needs. And we want this farm to succeed and be a viable part of the community for years to come. But that being said, we're a startup, and startup businesses lose money. And we've incurred some extra costs too. Like I asked the land surveyor, please go out there because we need a conservation to, to, I think we're on the agenda this evening for mm -hmm. conservation. Please go out and make sure that that plot plan is exactly correct for what that town needs. So that was an added cost, but we want to be compliant. Um, so I guess being the startup, we're here to say it's been the most humble request that we would ask you to kindly consider a transfer of the fees to the new permit. It's not that we haven't paid them previously, we have, but to pay them again, it's a hardship for a startup. We're here to be helpful, to do what is asked of us, and most of all, to be compliant. Yeah, we're not, we're not trying to do anything crazy here. No, honestly, right. we're, we're not. Yeah, it's a good project, you know, um, I have a lot of great ideas for people around. Um, it would be great for the town, it would be great for the other town. This is not, we're not against you. Well, and, 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 you're, and we're not against you either, uh, and but it is our duty I, to make sure that we I understand. I get, I get look out for the town. And that part of that is the building inspector exists for a reason and it's to keep the citizens of the town safe it's to keep the people who go to your farm safe it's the people who work at your farm safe this is all what that's about and i get the compassionate plea unfortunately or fortunately depending on how I look at that if this was a satan worshiping church trying to put in a, an agricultural thing i'd be having the same discussion and i would hope that either side of that i would not be taking into consideration things that are not facts of the, of the matter and yes i i, I understand what you're coming, where you're coming from, whatnot. And we're not trying to be overly punitive, but we are trying to not even set a precedent, but work within the precedent that the town has set 
in order to encourage other landowners in town to do permitted work correctly. Yes. Yeah, so that means that I would, before I start, I want to say that if you have, you want to think about it and wait till the next meeting, if they were to get all the information and they had their words say after you gave them what the fee was, I could issue the permit contingent that a week, 10 days, whatever you decided it had to be, they would pay it. At least it wouldn't hold up. The oh, permit. That's why they got right into that. Yeah, that's not that much like helpful because that gives us the, the you know, economy I, to. I, I, would, I, would, I would prefer, and I know you may or may not be ready to do this. I would like to know what we have to pay today, if it's possible. So I guess you guys, you know, you guys can take five ten minutes. Hmm. I'm not telling you what to do. I'm <laughs> just saying, take a little bit of time. You kind of know the score, okay? Uh, I need, I need. Uh, it's costing me. A tremendous amount mm -hmm. paying everyone up there all the equipment. I mean, this is like mm -hmm. the real, you know, this, yeah, yeah. this okay. is a real project. So I don't have to, I can't lose an extra week, 10 days. One day costs me a lot. One so, day. Do we want to talk? A number and see if there's a number that the three of us can agree we on. Can leave, feel good. We can go. We I can mean, leave. We, 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 can't, we, can't, we can't. We can't. We can't. We can't. Unfortunately, go behind closed doors. Oh, yeah. Yeah. By nature, yeah. Yeah. So, I, believe I, me, it'll make things a lot easier sometimes. <laughs> but no, it, 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 it's good for transparency and everything like that. Yeah. Um, so we have to do this in public, one way or the other. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, I'll just throw up. If it's fifty percent more work, just the fee should be fifty percent more and be done. Right? I mean. And you and no no penalty for I don't know I mean work done it's my, yeah. my thought. And I'm gonna struggle too because that first permit was paid, that job did not get completed. There was sometimes it's not our fault when you have to change a contractor, right? Yep. It, I I would have to guess. The reason for changing the contractor was probably very valid and in that property owner's best interest to change contractors and maybe even for safety and everything else to change contractors. I don't know the situation, nor can I, you know, presume it, but the fact that he paid a fee that large to start with, I I think we have to give some consideration to that because that job never was completed and to say that he has to pay that entire fee again i'm going to really struggle with it okay would you both be comfortable with saying five thousand dollars for the new fee that includes everything no no penalties or anything like that but that's about half what the first fee was and is probably more in the in line with what they're asking for in terms of agricultural would that be something you guys would feel comfortable with i'm not comfortable with that. crystal do you feel comfortable with five thousand If we're saying five thousand, they could start work. How much? How far away from are they from being able to start work again, Tom? I believe she said they have. I usually I deal with the contractor with this is a way of project right. like this. So, so I haven't heard from them. You know, um, but if you he's giving he's, everything, he's just waiting but, for us to. So, but and he didn't want. And, and to be fair, he was so reluctant when he saw that we were going to have to pay another twenty thousand. He's like, I don't feel comfortable signing this. If I sign it, then you gotta pay it. And he's like, uh, we can't, we can't just do that. Yeah. So that's how this whole thing started. That's the delay in him just signing off on this thing. He's so it, like, you're crazy. <laughs> you you don't want to spend your money like that. It just turned to timing. We sell on number today. Tomorrow, you get all the information from their business manager that all of the things that you needed to have, which was the workers' comp and whatnot. Assuming all that's in your hands tomorrow, how quickly can we give them the go ahead to start? Even the next day, I checked okay. before the meeting. Nothing was attached to start the checkoff list, but nothing okay. was attached yet because I was going to be able to say we're already moving forward. Now, I know you've said before that yeah. in general we don't start start any of that stuff without having payment. No. But you're okay with yes. Okay. Just wanted to make sure you're yeah, on So I would feel comfortable giving permission to go ahead and move forward ASAP 
if the board is comfortable settling on a number. A motion to the motion to have to see for the extra fifty percent of the work and uh, move forward. Do you want to say a specific number or just half the fee because well then the half the fee was for the first one. He said fifty percent. First one was like ten ish thousand, something like that. Right. But yeah. let's just yeah, I mean oh. let's just come up with a flat number instead of yeah, like, that's why yeah, that's why I said five thousand is because then we have a number. He knows what it is. You know what it is. There's no calculating. There's no running around. I mean, and honestly, Crystal, if you're not comfortable with five thousand, I'm comfortable doing four thousand. If that makes you feel better about it, um, you know, these are just numbers we're we're picking out of the air. You have a question there. Let's see what he's got to say. Yeah, go ahead. So, um, a couple things here. And so in the beginning, I asked, and we didn't really close it out. Was the official permit ever rescinded or not? An email in, in that I said, stop it. It was on the 22nd, I was going to be getting the permit right away. So, sure. Yes. But it was just not official stopped. right away, letter or anything else. It was rescinded on the 22nd. Yeah. And, you know, I've been talking to the doctor. He said it was going to get it right away. Mm -hmm. So, no, whether it was the contract or. The, I'm just trying to establish facts as mm -hmm. we mentioned. Yep. Yep. So officially, the permit is still outstanding. It's officially not closed because we can have discussion, but unless you rescind it, it's not closed. That would. That would I don't. Yeah. You know, sure. No, that's definitely in the law in the building code. The so the question I have is if we went to the agricultural rate for 4170, mm -hmm. right? And then let's say we triple it, so we're not set precedents against. Um, the stop work order. We can argue the stop work order, right? Because technically the permit is live, but that would be twelve thousand. Let's say he's already paid ten thousand in change. Ten thousand. Ten thousand four ninety. Ten. So ten thousand five. We would prefer not to pay anything cool. extra. But yeah. so, and you could think of it as yeah. the the fourteen total that you're paying or fifteen total you're paying is that twelve you're talking about. Plus some sting for the work being started without the, the thing. That's what, that's what I'm saying. Like you can look at it how you want. Yeah, but as you yeah. mentioned with the facts of the matter, again, we're not picking on Tom. The permit survives. There is no official stop work order, right? And if it was, the original, it was the original contractor doing the picking up the work and doing the work, we wouldn't be having that discussion. Mm -hmm. And and correct me if I'm wrong, but the, the whether the permit is open and alive or not. Doesn't mean it automatically transfers to the new person. Am my correct? Correct yeah. And so I get what you're saying is that no. hey, it didn't really close. It's, no. it's still open. I get that. No. But the the complaint that we are making, the the, the penalty that's being imposed, is not about whether or not that that permit had been opened or closed. It was whether or not an entity was not permitted to do that work without under that permit was doing the work or not. The same as if you would have had. If you've never gone to your contractor, but we found out that he, that bid ad contractor wasn't actually doing the work with somebody else entirely, it'd be the same situation. Well, here's another way to look at it potentially is the permit's not closed. The fee, if you came in as a agricultural, would be $4,100. If this new contractor coming in was would be allowed to assume the open permit and the fee stays the same, the 10500 that you have collected, in essence, you get one and a half times the fee as a penalty going by your agricultural rate, which he's entitled to do because he is a registered farm. Except there's a separate fee for applying a separate time. All right. Is there an abate, Tom? Is there an abatement process for overpayment of a fee? Jeff would know that it's not easy. I don't know if anybody that recognizes these things. So, so. I guess that would be where they proceed with the original fee. If there is an abatement process, follow the abatement process, right? I understood, yes. Yeah. And that, that's kind of what I was saying earlier is that- But that doesn't change, you know, that that's a separate issue. If they wanna follow an abatement process to try to get that original fee dropped down, go for it, do that, yeah. and then, Unfortunately, Nathaniel, because you, when we were saying 5,000, you said we can go as low as four. 
I don't think we can take that back now. No, and, and that's fair. And honestly, four is more in line with the agricultural. It's basically what the agricultural one is, anyways. And so that that's fine with me. Um, and and honestly, no, no, it, it was it, it was. I, I heard what you were saying about compassion and wanting to 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 do right for our our you know our businesses in town. And so I I also feel comfortable with just four. So. so. I motion that um, we we look for four thousand dollars to um, continue, or I don't. What do you want to call it, Tom? A new permit fee, or a, what do you want to call this next That's fee? For the, for the permit fee for um, transferring the permit fee. Yes, that's perfect. All right. So I motion. Uh, four thousand dollars for transferring the permit fee, and um, you know they are free to um, apply through the abatement process if they feel the original fee was incorrect. Sorry. All right, we have a motion date seconded. Jeff, you have some. I know. Also, that they can begin the work as soon as Tom has everything except for the money, right? Do you need that in the motion, or is that just in general? I think it should be in the motion. Okay, cool. All right, and then, all right, so I'll amend my motion to um, work can begin as soon as Tom gives the go-ahead mm -hmm. and the fee to follow. Okay. Second. All right, we have motion made and seconded. Any other discussion? All right, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Three nothing, Jeff. All right. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate Thank you. you taking the time for us to work all the way through that. It's going to be one of the most of us also. Sure. All right. Next up is um, amend the home rule home rule petition for stock net. And this is for one of our firefighters. Is that right? Yes. Uh, last this year, last year. Right, we got some yeah. um, special legislation to allow them to continue on after the age of 65. The governor's um, council asked us to amend it, um, and I will read the motion and then hand it to Cindy so that she has it. And then can, um, move. Uh, so it, the motion is that the select board vote to approve an amendment to House Bill Number Four Thousand Three, which the board finds to be within the general public objectives of the petition by adding the language in bold and underlined below so that the bill in its final form will read as follows. Notwithstanding any general or special law to the contrary, Scott Smith, a member of the Sunderland Fire Department, may continue to serve in a position until they reach 70 years of age or until the date of his retirement or non-reappointment, whichever occurs first, provided, however, that, and this is the new part, Scott Smith is mentally and physically capable of performing the duties of such position, provided further that the town may at its own expense require that Scott Smith be examined by an impartial physician designated by the town to determine such capability. No. And then it continues. Deductions from regular compensation shall be made under Chapter 32 of the general law subsequent to his reaching the age of 65 in connection with this service to the town for retirement or pension purposes. So, so the thing they're adding is just the part about that he's mentally and physically capable. That we are allowed and to. have the ability to yes. provoke that. Okay. Exactly. Which is, honestly makes total sense to me. And yep. that's how we're going to do the same thing anyway. So, yeah. um, you just need us to just reapprove? Uh, uh, yeah. Just, that? Yeah. Okay. Can we approve Any the questions? amendment as read by Jeff? There we go. <laughs> second. We have a motion being seconded to amend our home rule petition as re read by Jeff. All those in favor? Uh, Aye. Aye. Crystal Drake, Tom Bly. All right, three nothing. And last new business, we have the finalizing the annual town meeting warrant. Yes. Um, trying to do motions too. So, I um, do you want to have a discussion? So last week, then um, Nathaniel and Crystal voted on their recommendations for. Several of the articles, including the budget articles, I think. Um, those might have been. And so I didn't know if you also wanted to vote on no, those or no, okay. All right. Um, 
All right, so there are two outstanding articles that have been added. Uh, they are the planning board articles. Um, There's actually also a third of the citizen petition that we oh. were determining whether we were going to. That's right. Commit. Thank that's you. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah, so uh, battery storage and structure conversion bylaws. So we had a very good discussion about that last time. Uh, I appreciate the planning board coming in to help us with that because that was very helpful to be in answer all of our questions. Um, I mean, I'm ready to, to vote to recommend both of them. I think that they're both yeah, valid. Yeah. Did you yeah. see on the map where they can do the battery storage? Yeah, it's C2 C3. Right corner way up there. You just see the Gulf <laughs> District, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Where, where all the fun happens in Sutherland. Yeah. No. Um, yeah, it's, it's a tiny little section of 63. It's really just a rock quarry. There's not much else up there. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so unless there's more discussion, I would entertain a motion to um, recommend article, which one is it? Nine. Article nine. Um, battery storage. Yes. Motion to recommend article nine. Right. Second. We have a motion made and seconded to recommend Article 9. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Three nothing, Jeff. Yeah. All right. And then Article 10 is the um, structure one uh, tied to cozy corners. Um, and for context, there was some concern um, from members of the public about whether it would open up the ability for people to be able to do stuff on their properties, and we reassured them that the way that it's written is only about structures of a certain size that were before a certain date that had certain purposes. And um, we were sent a list of all the properties in town that meet those criteria. And aside from ones that are already being used for residential purposes, like the apartment complex and whatnot, uh, it's really just this building and the closed corners building that would have fallen into this bucket um, because of the very narrow scope of it. And the ultimate goal, which is to keep that building from being torn down in order to put apartments there, you know, I think it's a, a win for the town. Um, and I have no problem moving forward with it. So anything, Crystal, you want to add to that? Nope, I'm good with it. All right. I would entertain a motion. So I am I motion we approve article 10. Second. Recommend. Recommend. There you go. Right. That's a better Second. word. Second. All right, we have a motion made and seconded to recommend Article 10. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, three nothing. Okay. So that takes care of the warrants. Well, there is one more, which is oh, right, sorry. <laughs> um, I personally, and this is personal, not you know, professional, um, would vote to, to recommend. Um, but I would like to hear your opinions on this. This this is for context. This is this is the petition to allow 16 and 17 year olds. This is a petition to petition the state to allow us to allow 16 and 17 year olds to be able to vote in town elections, not state elections, not federal elections, none of the ones that are outside of our purview, but for things like annual town meeting or select board or finance committee for override, whatever. Um, it would allow 16 or 17 year olds to be able to engage civically, which I mean, I'm all for. So it's petitioning the state to allow us to do it. Um, and for context, they are also. The, the movement to do this is also happening in the other frontier um, high school towns, with the Deerfield and Conway, um, with the ultimate goal of being able to have the frontier civics teachers be able to include this in their planning and lessons and whatnot. Um, so, context wise. And then, like, I don't hear any discussion. At the time, I would entertain a motion to recommend Article which is it? Uh, 12. Article 12. Motion to recommend Article 12. Okay. Do we have a second? I'll second it. All right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Three nothing, Jeff. Okay. Wonderful. Um, all right. So that was the last of the warrants, right? Right. Um, we have motions which are the same except I put in the budget information. Um, so I will read that off, and if you want to um, vote on each motion, then we can be done with the motions. Sounds beautiful. Let's do All right. Uh, Article one: Move that the town vote to hear reports of the select board, school committee, and other town officer committees and commissions for take. 
Sorry, if people are, did you want to ask if there's public comment? Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. Peter or Dana, did you want to say anything? No, 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 I hope it. Okay. okay. <laughs> it's it's going to take a while. So. Yeah. Okay. I have I, public comment. Excuse me, I have a public you? comment. Um, why is this the second week that this isn't being broadcast on FCAT, Channel 15? The second uh, that, that, that let us know that they don't have the uh, staffing today to be able to accommodate us, unfortunately. Um, we don't have any control over that. We would love to, but we don't. Okay, that's two weeks in a row. That the, you know, that's the only reason we're on here is because we couldn't hear the meeting any other way. Yeah, no, we, you know, we, we'll, we'll talk we, about we, Article 10 at, at town meeting. Yeah, no, we we uh, we share your not just frustration, but you share we share your desire to have it always be broadcast. Yeah. But we also understand that FCAT is a, a limited organization with only so much ability to you know cover all the events, and sometimes we don't make the top billing for the events they have to cover. Um, and I would love to be able to say that we can guarantee we will always have that here, um, but unfortunately, that is not something that we have power over. Isn't that what you pay? <laughs> that but well, never mind. Okay. We'll take thank you very much for the answer. Yeah. Public comment over. All right, thank you. Thank you. All right. Article one. Uh move that the town vote to hear the reports of the select board, the Sunderland School Committee, and all other town officers, boards, committees, and commissions, or take any voter votes in relation thereto. Right. And would you give me a motion to approve that or yeah. motion to approve as read by Jeff? All right. <laughs> All right, we have a motion made and seconded to approve the article as read by Jeff. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Crystal Jack, John Bly. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Um, article 2, move that the town vote under provisions of MGL Chapter 41, Section 108, to set the salary and compensation for uh, set competition of all elected officials connected therewith for fiscal year 2025, or take any of vote or votes in relation thereto. Assessors chair $2,994.21. Uh, same amount for the clerk, same amount for other members annually. These are all annual. Uh, Board of Health, $1,500 for the chair annually. Um, and member, each of the other two members, $1,200. The moderator, a $200 annual set, uh, stipend. Planning Board, um, $1,000 for the chair, $1,000 for the clerk, and $550 for the other members. Uh, town clerk salary uh, 58,964. Select board chair 3,275 annually. Vice chair 2,850 and clerk 2,850. Motion to approve is read by Jeff. Aye. Second. Second. Okay. All right, we have motion made and seconded to approve Article 2 as read by Jeff. All those in favor? Aye. 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 You're not the Jeff. Thank you. All right, our, uh, Article 3 of the operating budget moved that the town vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $9,888,642 appropriate from the fund Comcast PEG access fund, the sum of 53000 appropriate from fund 610, the wastewater treatment plant the sewer fund, the sum of 4000 excuse me, 439854 and appropriate from free cash the sum of $2,200,117,301 for a sum total of $10,598,797. For town and general municipal purposes connected therewith for the fiscal book, fiscal year 2025, all as set forth in the document titled Town of Sunderland Fiscal Year 2025. Town meeting budget on file with the town clerk and posted on the town website at www.townofsunderland.us. Motion to the article is by Jeff. Second. All right, we have motion made and seconded to approve Article 3 as read by Jeff. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Read out the Jeff. Thank you. All right, uh, Article 4 is capital. Move to the town vote to transfer the sum of $405,670.63 from the Capital Stabilization Fund for the fiscal year 2025 capital budget, specifically for the capital equipment buildings, facilities, and other capital projects as shown on a document entitled 
FY25 capital budget by funding source on file with the town clerk and posted on the town website at townsunderland.us and this may be necessary in connection therewith and to authorize one or more tax exempt lease purchase finance agreements pursuant to GF general laws chapter 44 section 31c for capital equipment identified by the fiscal year 25 capital budget identified in the fiscal year 25 capital budget for terms not to exceed the useful life of the equipment as determined by the select board or take any voter votes in relation thereto. Motion to approve article four as your budget. Second. All right, we have a motion made and seconded to approve article four as your budget. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Four uh, sorry. Four of <laughs> Three nothing yet. I'm forty five cents. Um Article five. Move that the town vote to transfer from free cash the amount of one thousand two hundred two hundred eighty two dollars and ninety seven cents to pay a prior year legal bill from motion, law. Motion to approve Article five as read by Jeff. Okay. All right. We motion made and seconded to approve Article five as read by Jeff. All those in favor? All right. Aye. Aye. We have Jeff. Thank you. Uh, Article 6, move that the town vote to appropriate the amount of $177,000, of which $28,000 is from the CPA Historic Resources Reserve, and $149,000 is from the CPA Fiscal Year 24 Undesignated Fund Balance, as requested by the Sunderland Public Library. Monies will be used for the restoration of the masonry foundation and site of the Graves Memorial Library for the purpose of exterior preservation and related work. Said funds to be expended under the direction of the Sunderland Public Library or take any other action there. Too. Motion to approve Article 6 is read by Jeff. Okay. All right, we have a motion made and seconded to approve Article 6 as read by Jeff. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. We have a Jeff. Article 7 move that the town vote to appropriate the amount of 25000 from the CPA fiscal year 24 undesignated fund balance is requested by the town of Sunderland. Monies will be used as part of the local match for the Mass Trails grant for a feasibility study on the Norwalk North Shared Use Path proposal connecting Sunderland to UMass and the Waitley Park and Ride. Said funds to be expended in the direction of the town of Sunderland are contingent on getting the Mass Trails grant or take any other action there too. Motion to approve Article 7 is read by Jeff. Second. All right, we have a motion made and seconded to approve Article 7 as read by Jeff. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Yeah, Jeff. Uh, Article 8, move that the town vote to appropriate or reserve from the Community Preservation Fund annual revenues and the amounts recommended by the Community Preservation Committee uh, for community administrative expenses, uh, community preservation projects, and other expenses in fiscal year 2025. Uh, the appropriation of $6,000 from fiscal year 24 estimated revenues for committee administrative expenses, $25,401.91 for community preservation debt service on 120 North Main Street, uh, and then into reserves, fiscal year 24 estimated revenues for historic resources reserve, $28,945. FY24 estimated revenues for community housing reserve, 28,945. Uh, fiscal year 24 estimated revenues for open space reserve, 28,945. That's number eight. Motion approved article eight is read by Jeff. Second. Okay. We have a motion made and seconded to approve article eight as is read by Jeff. All in favor? Aye. 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 We have it, Jeff. Article 9, move that the town vote to amend Chapter 125 of the Code of Sunderland Zoning Bylaws as set forth in the document titled Proposed Zoning Amendment ATM 2024 Battery Storage on file with the town clerk with provisions to be inserted shown in underlined text and provisions to be deleted shown in strike through text or take any other action relative thereto. Motion to approve Article 9 is by Jeff. Second. All right, we have a motion made and seconded to approve Article 9 as read by Jeff. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Yeah, thank you. Uh, article 10. Move that the town vote to amend Chapter 125 of the Code of Sunderland Zoning Bylaws is set forth in a document entitled Proposed Zoning Amendment ATM 2024 Structure Conversion on file with the town clerk with provisions to be inserted shown in underlined text and provisions to be deleted shown in strike through text or take any other action relative thereto. Motion to approve Article 10 is read by Joe. Second. All right, we have a motion made and, and seconded to approve Article 10 as read by Jeff. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Crystal Jack Chamber. Yeah. Okay. 
Uh, Article 11, move that the town vote pursuant to the provisions of general laws, chapter 44, section 53, D and a half, as most recently amended to establish fiscal year 2025 fiscal year spending limits for the revolving funds listed in section 35.6 of the general bylaws and to authorize such expenditure limits to remain in place from fiscal year to fiscal year unless revised by town meeting prior to July 1st for the ensuing fiscal year as follows. Wiring inspector, $9,000. Plumbing inspector, $3,000. Board of Health, $16,500. Sunderland Public Library Community Room, $5,000. Fire inspector, $7,000. And highway shared use equipment, $23,000. Motion to approve Article 11 is read by Jeff. Second. All right, we have a motion made and seconded to approve Article 11 as read by Jeff. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Crystal Drake, John Aye. Bly. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Article 12. Moves that the town vote to authorize the select board to petition the General Court of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts to enact legislation in substantially the form below to grant the town of Sunderland the authority to endow legal voting rights in municipal elections for town of Sunderland residents aged 16 and 17 years old. And further, the select board be authorized to approve amendments to said act by the General Court before its enactment that are within the scope of the general objectives of this motion. An act granting the Town of Sunderland the authority to endow legal voting rights in municipal elections for Town of Sunderland residents aged 16 and 17 years old. Be it enacted by the Senate and House of Representatives and General Court assembled and by the authority of the same as follows. Section 1. Notwithstanding the provisions of Section 1 of Chapter 51 of the General Laws or any other general or special law, rule, or regulation to the contrary, any individual aged 16 or 17 years old residing in the Town of Sunderland who is ineligible to vote under state law due to age, but is otherwise eligible to vote under state law may upon application have their names entered on a list of voters established by the office of the town clerk for the town of Sunderland. Such individuals on the list of voters may vote in any election for local offices, local ballot questions, annual town meeting and special town meeting in accordance with this act. For the purposes of this act, uh, quote, local voters, unquote, are anyone who's eligible to vote pursuant to this act in a local election upon a local ballot question or in an annual town meeting or special town meeting in the town of Sunderland. Section two, said office of the town clerk shall establish a separate registration list for local voters who shall fill out an alternative registration form upon turning 18. Each local voter shall be taken off said list and notified that he or she must register as a regular voter in accordance with state law regulations and guidelines in order to be eligible to vote. Said office shall create and print at the town of Sunderland's expense the special registration form needed for the purpose of registering local voters. Section three, said board is hereby authorized to promulgate regulations, guidelines, and forms to implement the purpose of this act. If a local, this is sorry, section four, if a local ballot question appears on a state election ballot, the office of the town clerk shall print a separate ballot for the local ballot question at the expense of the town of Sunderland. Section five. The Town of Sunderland is hereby authorized to pass ordinances to implement the purposes of the, the purpose of this act. Section six, nothing in this act shall be construed to confer upon local voters the right to vote for any state or federal office or in any state or federal ballot question. Okay, motion to approve article 12 is read by Jeff. That was a lot. I have got a second. All right, we have motion made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Crystal Drake, John Bly. Read nothing. All, All right. right. Since these are consent articles, I'll just read them quickly and then we can fly. Article 13 moves that the town vote to authorize the treasurer collector to enter into compensating balance agreements during fiscal year 2025 as permitted by General Laws Chapter 44, Section 53 F, or take any vote or votes in relation thereto. Article 14 moves the town vote to authorize the select board to apply for, accept, and expend any grants or donations from state or federal governments or private agencies, individuals, or institutions, or take any vote or votes in relation thereto. Article 15 moves that the town vote to accept and expend any sum or sums of money which may be available from the state for Chapter 90 work and road improvement, Chapter 90 work for road improvement and equipment expense, or take any vote or votes in relation thereto. Article 16, move that the town vote under the provisions of General Laws Chapter 40, Section 4A to authorize the select board to enter into intermunicipal agreements or take any vote or votes in relation thereto. Article 17, move the town 
vote to authorize the select board to enter into contracts for goods and services with duration in excess of three years pursuant to the provisions of general laws chapter 30b section 12b or take any vote or votes in relation thereto finally article 18 move that the vote authorize the town treasurer with the approval of the select board to borrow money from time to time in anticipation of revenue of the financial year beginning july 1st 2024 in accordance with provisions of general law chapter 44 section 4 and to issue a note or notes therefore payable within one year and to renew any notes or notes as may any note or notes as may be given for a period of less than one year in accordance with general law chapter 44 section 17 or take any vote or votes in relation thereto motion to approve consent articles 13 through 18 as well read by jeff Second. All right, we have a motion to approve Article 13 through 18 as well read by Jeff. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Crystal Jack, bye bye. Aye. Three nothing, Jeff. Thank okay. you very much. And just be glad that someone didn't like do a citizen petition that just <laughs> like a whole fable, you know, wrapped around. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Anyway. Uh, thank you for all that. I know there's a lot to read off at once, and we appreciate you doing so. All right, is that all you needed from us for the uh, any of time meeting warrant. Yeah, I think we are ready. All right. April 26, 6 30. And for our viewer out there, the board. <laughs> for our viewer out there, reminder that annual time meeting is next Friday at 6 30 p.m. And that's in the elementary school gymnasium again, right? Yes. Okay. Beautiful. A week from this Friday. A week from this Friday, yes. The 26th, right? Okay. Beautiful. All right. Old business. Us because we've been here for four hours. Right? Um, I don't have anything uh, on my end. Dan, I've got nothing new. I checked in on the date for the Mass Trails grant that's June, but okay. this would be there. Uh, just kind of... Crystal, anything for you? No. Don't we have mm -hmm. the um, mowing contract to award? Yep. Yep. I was going to bring that up. Yep. That's going to be in his town ministry updates, isn't it? Oh, oh, okay. I thought it was under new business. Sorry. All right. Yeah. Select board. I mean, uh, yeah. kind of <laughs> so we got the mowing bids, um, and we had three respondents: um, Hearn Landscaping, Eastern and Brooks, and Sugarloaf Lands. Um, taking in. So I, I won't say who did what, but we had one group with um, one percent electric equipment one group with 50% electric equipment, and one group with 20% electric equipment. Mm -hmm. um, I will say that the electric was more expensive, um, more than 10% more expensive okay. um, than the lowest bid. So again, when we go out in three years again, maybe we adjust how, how that works um, okay. so that it's closer, but the lowest bidder was Hearn Landscaping, um, who's our current um, contractor. Yeah. And so I am going to recommend that we award the contract to Hearn Landscaping. Um, the total bid for the three years was uh, $56,432. And just for clarity, mm -hmm. and this is to be clear, this is not saying anything about my preference your way. We don't have a choice, right? <laughs> we're, well, we we're should, bound we should, by we should right. So, so period. I mean, to to put it into perspective, um, so the low bid was fifty six thousand four hundred thirty two. Yeah. The second low bid um, was when you take into account their electric electric electrification would have come out to sixty five thousand six hundred and sixty. Yeah. And then the third bidder. Um, Including their electrification discount was one hundred ninety six thousand six hundred fifty. Wow. Okay. And then just just to use, was that the fifty percent? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so there is actually a premium. Yeah. Was, that was the question we had. Right? Okay. And there was a premium for electrification. Yeah. Yep. Um, sure. It'll take time. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so but, I mean, it, hey, we have we have the information. And, yeah. yeah. And and next time maybe we decide it's a twenty percent differential instead of ten percent if we really care a lot about it, but. We are bound to what we decided this time. We have asked the the, the bid. We got bids. Yep. We have a low, obvious low bidder. Um, so at this time, I would end maybe in the next three years when the contract comes up again, there'll be more electric. 
Sure. Um, well, I think the thing about asking is that it tells all three bidders, hey, this is something the town cares about. So maybe in three years, if you want to be more competitive, maybe you start working in that direction. So it has the intended effect regardless of how it turns out. Yep. That's good. Um, so yeah, at this time, I would entertain a motion to approve giving the uh, mowing contract to the low bidder or her. Motion to uh, award the contract to her. I'll second it, and um, for disclosure purposes, um, greater than 35 years ago, I was married to Robert Ahern, but I currently have never actually had any financial involvement with his business. Very good. Thank you for that disclosure. We do appreciate that. That being said, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Do nothing, Jeff. Thank you very much. Yeah, uh, I have two other quick things. Um, one, I've been talking to council and I'll tie the, the new cannabis group about the host community agreements. I um, was wondering if you wanted me to invite council and we sort of have three options. Um, and we can do a waiver, we can do a model host community agreement or we can have council just draft a totally new host community agreement. Mm -hmm. And so in my conversations with the council, she said, hey, would you like me to come to a select board meeting and talk them through the various options and have, allow them to ask questions? And so I and this is in context of, correct me if I'm wrong, but didn't Massachusetts recently change the wording of it so that the, the fees that were the, the tax that we collect has to be accountable for or has to be shown that it's related to work? So it, one work, of the biggest kind of changes is the community impact fee yeah. and yes it's so i believe the waiver we would not get a community impact fee um i believe with the model agreement there's some limitation where yes it, instead of them just giving us whatever that community impact fee is we would now have to say here are itemized expenses please give us the money okay. uh, and we have a time period to do that um and then Obviously, if we wanted to draft our own, that included things like the traffic study and other things that we had asked for previously, we could do that too. So, I mean, I guess my big question on, on this whole thing is, if we have to itemize it, and we're a small town with not a lot of expenses and whatnot, I don't know how easy it's going to be to tie much of anything to the new facility. I mean, we might be able to say 3% of our police budget or whatever we can figure out some kind of ratios but my suspicion is that it's going to be a lot more effort on the part of the town to come up with receipts for all that than it's going to be worth the squeeze in the money so i guess my question is is it worth doing all this effort and paying our council and doing all this stuff in order to come to a conclusion that we just waive the fee or we just waive it and move on with our lives because it's not worth the 100 hours for you and cindy in order to recover 600 dollars or Thirteen hundred dollars from them, or something like that. That's my concern. If we were talking about this a year ago, I'd have a whole different opinion on it. Um, I just am concerned that that a town our size is not necessarily going to. Well, I would just say that any time that staff spent working on that would be chargeable to the cannabis company. So chargeable, yes, but. How hard is it to say I'm charging you for a half hour of my time on this one day? I'm charging you for 15 minutes of the select board time on this one day. I'm charging you for a police officer had to stop somebody out in front of your building for whatever. I mean, I, I'm worried about the the work involved in recouping any costs at all. And maybe I'm wrong. And maybe that's a question that we ask other towns that are yeah. similar, and we find out like, hey, under these new like Greenfield, for example, hey, under these new rules. What's your plan? Are you going to co asking them for money? Do you have a, a you know something in, in place? What are your preliminary estimates of what that's going to look like? Because if it, again, if it ends up being that we're recovering fourteen hundred dollars, but it's spending you know forty hours to get it, forty hours to get it, <laughs> um, and even if we can build them for those forty hours, it's part of the whole thing. I still don't think it's going to end up being well, so. So you know. yeah, I agree, and I think that it's more about reserving our ability to collect it in case they mm. change the law, right? Okay. So if we sign yeah, a host community that. agreement with no community impact fees, yeah. we can't collect it. Yes. Right? Or if we or we find it next year, wow, I didn't realize we were going to have to have another police officer every Saturday morning because we have we've had five accidents this in the last six months of people 
purchasing, going out to their cars, using, and then driving away. So it may be, you're right, maybe we find that, that I'm underestimating the cost of the town and we do want to recover that. So that's why I was asking. Yeah. Um, that being said, I do think it's worth having the council be involved, whether it's in a meeting or whether it's just you and them on the phone and then reporting it back to us. Yeah. I mean, do, is there any sense of how big these fees are? I mean, how, what are we talking about? It's so, if I recall correctly, Northampton is something like two and a half percent tax on top of the like 17 and a half percent oh, so they, 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 whatever. Tax on, I see. I see. Well, well, so we're going to get the three, there's a three percent local tax that we're going to get. Yes. So this would be on top of it. Um, can you do anything in, in lieu of? Can you say 3% plus an X number and call it good? You can't do that. Because that's, that's, can't do that. that's, yeah, that's, 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 so you, that's what the law says. You have yeah. to expense it. Yeah. Okay. So I can tell you that in Amherst, I think the first year of that first cannabis company, 3% of gross sales was about 200000 yeah. okay. But that was, you know, the second or third yeah, there yeah. a lot of places in Western Mass. So I mean, there would be a lot more business than the average business today. Sure, 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 sure. So okay, so so that's not a significant chunk of money. Yeah. But if if, if and that's the three percent that's we guaranteed. We get either way. Yeah. Um. So I don't know. I mean, I I don't I just don't know it's worth. Our our lawyers aren't cheap. You know, their time's not cheap. If we're talking about a whole bunch of effort in order to find out that we're just going to be, you know, so, so so I guess maybe the thing is we just go with the, the the host agreement as it is because that has that wording in there, and if we never go to them and say here's our receipts, we don't collect anything, but we have that we retain yeah. the ability to be. So does this model include it? Uh, the model includes some of it, and I think that that's that might be the easiest route to go. Then yeah. if we're not, if we don't care about things like nuisance and, you know, because the, the model host community agreement does not include anything like that. So, hey, the odors from the shop are bothering the social behind it. There's not much we can do about it. Um, if we put something in the host community agreement about nuisance, then we could enforce, hey, we said no odor beyond property lines. Um, we have other avenues to force that. Right? Yeah. yeah, but I think that yes, uh, from a cost benefit perspective, I think that I'll I'll look more closely at the model host community agreement and understand exactly what community impact fees we could collect, mm -hmm. and I'll bring it back to you all. And if you're satisfied with that, that's and, and if you feel like you want to run that by ask council any questions or whatever, yeah. you know, yeah. to get that information cool. I just I don't think. Making it quite a bigger production at this stage makes sense. Yeah, yeah. let's see what other places yeah. have done. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah, and then it just becomes one of those until it's actually in there and open and running. We don't know what those potential nuisances are going to be, right? Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. again, you know, are there going to be? complaints from the apartments near there every single day and the police are going to have to respond every single day we don't know it, it's highly unlikely you know there's enough places around now that you know i think there's some pretty good hish or you know other places to look at and see what type of impact they are having on their community but we just don't know okay Thank you. Yep. Um, and then the last thing is just that I'm um, working on the annual report for ARPA spending, submitting that by the end of the month. That's all I got. Uh, one last thing, sorry to go back to it, but um, just so that Crystal and Dan are aware, um, I did do the select board uh, report for our department. Excellent. So, Thank you. We have it. And we are not doing the executive session, right? Yes, and sorry, yes, it says executive session on here. Um, but that was to discuss bargaining that has been postponed multiple times because of sickness and whatnot. So uh, we are going to take that, not do that tonight, and we will add that back in once we actually have done the negotiating that we're talking about. So um, that will be upcoming in probably two weeks or so. Uh, we should see that on maybe the, I guess the sixth or something like that. Good. All right. Just one other thing, only because it just popped in my head and I didn't think of it before. Um, this whole, you know, earlier discussion here about the building permits and work stoppage and all that. Will you be copied on that email or on whatever the communication is? 
Yeah. You know, that they can resume work. Yep. Okay. Just as, I just wanted to make sure that you were part of that whole chain. Yeah, yeah. If you don't mind just giving a typical email saying, hey, it's gone through, yeah. you know, the the, the uh, permission has been given and whatnot just for, yeah. for visibility. Okay. Anything else from anybody? I'm Chris, good. I was going to just ask you guys for <clears throat> like town meeting stuff, you know, just anything you want to highlight. Save you guys a phone call next week. That's fair. <laughs> um, it was a expensive year for everybody. I'm sure you probably are not the first person telling me that. Um, it was a, a difficult budget season, but you know we did a good job. Um, the really the one thing I want to spike out is just how grateful I am to the town for giving faith in us last year to pass the capital override. Doing that allowed us to balance the budget this year. Basically, um, if we if we had to come up with three hundred thousand dollars of budget money for the capital projects that needed to happen. Uh, the budget looks a lot different than it does right now. Um, so just my appreciation for the town for putting their faith in us um, that it was our decision to do that. Um, and the data is bearing out that that was the right decision to do. So anything from the other members? Seemed pretty straightforward this year. Yeah. yeah. No, it was, it was not, oh, it was not very sexy. Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, the other thing I would just say is that there were a lot of things that we were asked that I would have liked to have done. Uh, one of those being the, the library had asked to extend their hours and whatnot. Um, unfortunately, this was not a year where that was feasible, yeah. um, but that, you know, not for a lack of like, wanting to, you know. Anything you want to add, Jeff? No. Okay. All right. Motion well, to adjourn. Motion to adjourn, yes. Do we have a second? Second. All right, we have a motion made and seconded to adjourn. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right, three nothing. It is 8.01 p.m. Time to go for the